The Apple of Contentment, by Nell Brinkley. You are husky of leg, and bird bright of eye, and young of heart. You are brave like a flower, for flowers carpet the fields for such short, poor months, with every smallest atom of their beauty and fragrance, making a perfect glory in their tiny hour, unmasking one of millions more as perfect, and frail lived as wax before the blaze, you are all these, and maybe you can find it. It hangs high and of pure gold, on a limb of a lustrous tree. You can know right away that it's a magic tree because of the green of it. Even if you can't knock down the apple, after you've batted away for years and years, why, just lean your tired back against his saddeny trunk in the cool, green twilight of the tree's shade and a deep, exquisite peace will settle down on your shoulder like a brooding dove and coo their deep-throated, monotonous, until your blood runs steady and quiet and you put back your head and say, by goodness, what a beautiful thing it is to breathe in this good, kind world. You couldn't get your patient fist around the glistening yellow apple of contentment, but you found the magic shadow of its tree and happiness. Some tricklings of enchantment have dripped on your lucky yellow pate. The apple of contentment hangs on the road to the well at the world's end. I've told you the tale of that. If you drink from the crystal of that well you'll have youth in your heart forever and ever. Some folks have found and dipped their mouths into its crinkled silver, I know, but not anyone ever got the apple. Other adventures, too, there are on the way, and charms of magic that are easy to carry away, but the apple has glittered there always and always. Some lucky maids and men have dented it a bit, but it just twirled round and hung on, and they went away with their arms aching. Not many of them stay long enough to find the enchantment in its shade. Maybe you will. A funny sight you'll see there, I reckon. When I was there last a king tiptoed on his ermine and diamond slippers and slashed daintily with his gold scepter, and beside him, taking his turn and sometimes jostling him hard, was a swineherd swiping away at it with a barrel stave, with mighty blows and ballooned cheeks, and his breath whistling between them. Maybe when you go, you'll find a little daughter of the rich rubbing elbows with a humble hurdy-gurdy lady, both tiptoeing and swinging strongly at the golden, glittering apple of contentment. A common battleground that is, to fight for pure, fire-cored contentment. 